Hello, this is Jonathan at Robotist, and today we're going from zero to Dynamixel. To be more specific, today's video will be walking you through the entire process of setting up your new Dynamixel smart servo for the first time. We'll be unpacking our servo and Dynamixel starter kit, then testing and configuring the Dynamixel and U2V2 with the Dynamixel wizard. Before we start, we should go through what I like to call the quick start checklist, a list of five things that we need to be able to set up our Dynamixels. Number one, servos. We obviously can't control a Dynamixel if we don't have one. Number two, a controller. We need a way to control our Dynamixel, in this case, a U2D2. Always be sure to check our eManual page to ensure your chosen controller is compatible with your Dynamixel and your software. Number three, the software. How exactly are we going to be talking to our Dynamixel controller? Today, we'll be using Dynamixel Wizard 2.0. This and other robotic software can be found in our download center, a link to which is included in the description below. Four, power. A Dynamixel can't operate if we don't supply it with adequate power. Five, communication. It's important to make sure that the Dynamixels in our system can all communicate with one another. So we have to make sure that they all use the same serial protocol or that we have Dynamixel communication bridges to do some translation for us. Now that we've made sure that we actually have everything that we need, we can get to setting up our Dynamixels. The first step in this process is getting everything put together, starting with the U2D2. To assemble the U2D2, start by attaching the included PCB supports to the underside of the power hub board, then affixing them using the included nuts. After attaching the supports, attach the U2D2 to the power hub board by using the included plastic rivets. The U2D2 can be attached to the base facing either direction, but I find it easier to line up the white connectors in the U2D2 with the matching connectors on the PCB. When inserting the rivets, the wider base section of the rivet should be placed into the hole first, with the thinner inside section inserted after the base of the rivet has been properly seated. The rivets will not slide in smoothly if inserted fully assembled and may cause damage if forced. The final part of assembling your U2D2 is simply to connect cables between the matching connectors on the U2D2 and the power hub board. Once that's done, you can plug in the SMPS that was included in the starter kit and connect it to your U2D2. Now we attach the Dynamixel itself. Using the included cable, connect it to the U2D2 on the matching port in the power hub board. Once everything is connected, you can perform a quick check that everything is secure by switching on the power hub board. The light on the board near the switch should illuminate, and a red LED on the back of the servo should blink once to show that the Dynamixel is receiving power. Now, we can move on to first time Dynamixel setup with Dynamixel Wizard. When you open Dynamixel Wizard, you'll be greeted with this main menu screen. It might look a little empty right now, but that's because we haven't yet detected our Dynamixel. To do that, first make sure that all cables are properly seated and that power has been turned on. Then, click the gear icon labeled Options in the toolbar at the top of the screen. This is the main menu setting for the wizard, where you can adjust all settings for the entire application. But for now, the only settings we need to change are the ones for scanning. The scan settings should be displayed by default anytime you open this menu. If not, you can move to the correct section by clicking the icon labeled Scan. This screen is where you configure the options that the Dynamixel wizard will use to scan and detect connected Dynamixels. For now, we just need to ensure that 1, in the Protocols section, both 1 and 2 are selected. 2, in the Port and Baud Rate sections, Scan All is selected. Three. The ID range goes from 0 to 252. Because of those settings that we chose, it might take a while for the scan to find your Dynamixel. In the future, once you're more familiar with configuration of your system, you can customize the scan settings to skip any unnecessary steps and speed up this process. As soon as your Dynamixel is detected in the scanning screen, you can click the Skip button to stop the scanning process early and your servo will remain detected. 
Now that we've detected our Dynamixel, the main menu screen will start to look a lot less empty. The left sidebar now displays the information on all connected Dynamixels, and if more than one is present, will allow you to switch the active connection between any of them. The main panel in the center now displays what's called the control table of the connected Dynamixel. This control table is how Dynamixels organize all the information they process and the instructions we give them. It would be a good idea to spend some time familiarizing yourself with it here and by checking out our e-manual. The right panel displays live information about the connected Dynamixel. I'll go over it in more detail when we test our servos out a little bit later. Now, there's one more thing we should always remember to do when we set up a new Dynamixel for the first time. Update the firmware. To do that, click the update icon in the main toolbar, third from the right. That will open up the firmware management tool and issue a few warnings. It's important to pay attention to these warnings as a failed firmware update has the possibility to permanently damage or disable your Dynamixel. After reading these warnings, clicking the next button will start the firmware update process. After you've completed the firmware update, it's time to take a quick tour of the Dynamixel panel I mentioned earlier. Back on the main menu, take a look at the leftmost panel displaying the live Dynamixel information. This panel is the simplest way for you to test your servo and get familiar with its capabilities and status. The blue box at the top displays the full model name of your Dynamixel, and the two buttons directly underneath provide two different ways to reset your Dynamixel in case of any problems. The left factory reset button will reset nearly every setting on your servo to its default value. This is useful in the event of an accidental misconfiguration or if your Dynamixel is behaving a bit strangely. Oftentimes, a factory reset will be enough to fix minor issues with your servo. The right reboot button will turn your Dynamixel off then back on again, as if you had disconnected and reconnected the power. This is useful for resetting any temporary faults that may occur during testing. Underneath these buttons is the most important section of this sidebar. The left side features a drop-down menu to select your desired operating mode. The available options for this menu depend on your particular model of Dynamixel that you have connected. Underneath, there's a pair of toggle switches, one to enable or disable the onboard LED, useful for identifying which Dynamixel you're currently connected to, and a second that toggles the torque of the Dynamixel. This is how you enable or disable the movement of the motor at a click of a button. The circular object to the left of those toggles is a visual display of the current position of the Dynamixel, as well as its movement status. If we switch the operating mode to a velocity-driven mode, rather than one based on position, the display for this section changes to a bubble and track, showing the current direction of the servo's movement. For now, we should leave it on a positional mode. Underneath that, there are some small indicators that will light up to indicate any faults that may occur with your servo. The large box beneath these indicators displays important information in a numerical format. The last section of the right sidebar is for modifying values in the control table. When you click on something in the control table menu in the center, information about that value will be displayed here, and you can enter new values to write to the servo. This will be the primary way of interacting with most Dynamixel settings through Dynamixel Wizard and the first tool we'll be using as we begin to move on to testing our Dynamixel. The first thing we need to do now that we've set everything up is to check and if needed, change the ID of the Dynamixel we have connected. Every Dynamixel has an ID number saved in its memory. This is how controllers know which Dynamixel to send commands to. For this reason, it's important that every Dynamixel connected to a controller has a unique ID assigned to it. If two Dynamixels share the same ID, it will cause communication between the servos to fail. In order to change the ID, all we need to do is click on the ID field in the control table and select a new one from the list that appears in the Dynamixel sidebar. You can feel free to change the IDs to any number you want between 1 and 252. They do not need to be in order or related to each other in any way as long as you remember which Dynamixel has each ID. It may even be helpful to put the ID numbers on stickers attached to the servo to be sure you won't forget. With that out of the way, we can finally get to moving our servo. First, we should check that our servo is in position control mode. Then, we can turn the torque switch to on. You may have noticed that many of the fields in the control table panel have been grayed out now that the torque has been turned on. Those protected settings are disabled anytime the torque is turned on in order to prevent damage as well as undefined behavior 
from changing these settings while the servo is in motion. Now that the torque is on, if you click a position on the face of the Dynamixel wheel in the sidebar, you should see the red line move to that position and the physical servo do so as well. You can also change the servo's position by selecting the goal position field in the control table and using that wheel, the three angle setting buttons, or by directly entering a value. I would recommend that you spend some time playing around with your servo so that you can familiarize yourself with its movement as well as with its control table before you move on to more advanced subjects. That's everything you need to know to get your new Dynamixel smart servo working for the first time, but it's just scratching the surface of what Dynamixels are capable of. If you want to learn more about our servos, you can check out some more of our tutorial videos available here on this channel, take a look at our official Robotis e-manual, or pop in to say hello at the Robotis community forum. The links to all of these things are in the description below. This has been Jonathan at Robotis, wishing you a great day. I look forward to building more with you soon.